Hello, uh, we are currently live, but we'll wait a moment more before everybody comes. Thank you again. Um, if anybody has arrived early, we'll wait one more moment. And we are having everybody join us now. Good afternoon, it's 3.30. Uh, we only have 20 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Derek Smallwood, and I'm here today at the CSU Education Abroad Fair to speak to you about college uh, CVMBS um, semester long programs available to education abroad students. Um, again, my name is Derek. Uh, my colleague Vanessa is doing tech support. Uh, we do have a QA and a um, capability, so if you do have questions, you're welcome to put them in the Q&A, and Vanessa will answer them, and maybe if we have a bit of time at the end, we can talk to those together. So I'm here today just to talk to you about education abroad at CSU, specifically in programming over the semester for CVMBS. And our hope by the end of this entire week, and there's tons of awesome presentations throughout the course of the week, um, supplemented to what you're going to learn today, you'll know the what, why, when, how, where, all the details of study abroad here at CSU. Before we get started, I do want to do the CSU land acknowledgement. Colorado State University acknowledges with respect that the land we are on today is the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute nations and peoples. This was also a site of trade, gathering, and healing for numerous other Native tribes. We recognize that the indigenous people as original stewards of this land and all of the relatives within it. As these are words of acknowledgement are spoken and heard, ties of nations have to their traditional homelands are renewed and reaffirmed. CSU is founded as a land grant institution and we accept that our mission must encompass access to education and inclusion. And significantly that our founding came at a dire cost of Native, Native nations and peoples whose land this university was built upon. This acknowledgement is that the education and inclusion we must practice in recognizing our institutional history, responsibility, and commitment. Very brief introduction to myself. Again, Derek Smallwood. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and his. I have a couple different hats in the Office of International Programs. Uh, I am our international risk manager. So that means I support our international initiatives, uh, both our students, uh, but as well as our faculty and some of our graduate research um, abroad and helping mitigate, identify, respond to ongoing risk um, and really helping everybody be safer travelers. I also advise for the Middle East and Africa. So that's a part of the world that I've always been interested in um, that I did study in myself. Um, this is a part where I still advise undergraduate students who are interested in, in, in that particular region. As noted, I did study abroad in Palestine. Uh, for a semester, I taught English, and then I also studied abroad in Italy, so two very different experiences, and I really like to uh, help students think through what their goals and priorities are for education abroad, and help them figure out which program is a really good fit for them, like I did. So some myth busting, and, and this is also a part of education abroad that I really enjoy, um, because I think there's a lot of misconceptions around education abroad. And you may have already attended the Education Abroad 101 presentation where we kind of introduce the basics of Education Abroad here at CSU. And if you haven't, there is a presentation happening every day. So it's tomorrow at 9 a.m. And this goes an overview of Education Abroad at CSU, some of the skills you may gain from the experience and why those skills are important, and a breakdown of the different program types. Now, with that kind of basic knowledge, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about semester length programs today that I recommend specifically for your college. But before I do that, I do wanna address some of these myths on the screen. So first things first, an education abroad should not delay your graduation. In fact, with good planning can enhance your degree in significant ways. They can help you graduate on time and in some cases, maybe even graduate early. We do have programming available over breaks over the summer. And while I'm talking about the semester today, there's definitely great ways to go abroad over those uh, periods when you're not taking coursework at CSU and maybe even graduate early. Second, there is the myth that education abroad is more expensive than courses and living here at CSU and in Fort Collins. And there are some expensive programs, but many of the programs we work with are very similar to price to CSU in a semester in Fort Collins. 
And some of them are actually less expensive. In fact, one of the ones I'm gonna talk about today is less expensive than CSU. Uh, and we'll also talk a little bit about financial aid later today too. Um, third, I think it's really important to start early and talk to your academic advisor about going abroad. You are able to fulfill course requirements when you're studying abroad. And these would be courses required for your major, they could be electives, but I think it's just most important to really start early and that way you can fill, fulfill those course requirements by study abroad. Finally, um, our risk management team has really had a busy time over the course of the pandemic. Um, we do have my role, this international risk manager that constantly monitors and communicates international risk that students may face while they're abroad. And I think it's important to acknowledge because together we can foster safe and successful experiences by thinking about, you know, maybe some of the challenges we may face when we're traveling internationally um, in advance rather than in the moment. I think it's important just to kind of add some context about where C uh, VMBS students are going abroad or rather which um, focuses in your college are going abroad. It's a wide variety of locations. I looked, they started from Mexico to Italy to England. So I looked at instead the different um, departments and this does include graduate students. So you see a lot of undergraduate students in CVMBS, as well as some of our graduate programs who are studying abroad and adding an international experience to their time here at CSU. And the reason I highlighted this image because I think it demonstrates that even students with really sequential degree plans, such as yourself, are able to get abroad. You know, these are majors that you may not think are the best fit for study abroad, but again, with that planning, I think it's really possible and in fact, great opportunity to be able to do so while we're at CSU. Nearly every CSU department has a recommended programs list. Um, we've created these lists in partnership with the different academic departments. And this is list, this list is just a start. You can find it on our website, but if this program is on that list, or if a program of interest is on that list, there are a number of different courses available through that program that should be able to fulfill your degree, degree requirements. It's important to work with your academic advisor, work with our office to communicate your academic needs. But again, starting with these recommended programs is a great way to look at programs that have been recommended specifically for your department. I'm gonna highlight a few of those now. And again, a reminder, these are just semester length programs. So the first one I, I wanna introduce is uh, the University of Exeter. It's a top ranked uh, university. It's, it's part of the um, Russell Group it's called, which is the UK equivalent of the Ivy League has a very strong institutional or uh, international reputation for academics and research. The University of Exeter is noted as one of the most beautiful and botanically interesting of any UK university. They have all these gardens and grounds that are just absolutely beautiful and just a really traditional British kind of castle to like university. Um, the main campus is located near the city center of Exeter. It is about a 15 to 20 minute walk um, from that downtown of Exeter. Exeter is a fun college town about, of about 130,000 people dating back to the Roman era, so a lot of history. Exeter is especially suited to students studying biosciences, but does have coursework in other natural and environmental sciences, as well as the humanities, really a wide variety of coursework available to students, but really good fits for those biosciences. As an exchange university, this is a unique opportunity to really immerse yourself in the UK university experience. So you're living in student housing, you can join the, the, what they call clubs and societies to get yourself involved on campus. And you can really, it's a great home base to explore Southwestern England. And you're doing that all while paying the same tuition you pay here at CSU. And that's the way that exchange model works. So this is a really awesome cost-effective program that works really well for your college. Uh, the next program I wanted to highlight was Semester at Sea. So when I was doing a little background, um, I did see that a number of CVMBS students had participated in Semester at Sea in the past. Semester at Sea is a CSU partner program where students spend this semester visiting, I think it's 12, 10 to 12 different countries um, around the world and taking CSU coursework while at sea. So these are taught by CSU professors. There's a number of CSU staff on the ship. This is a really great opportunity to check out a lot of different countries while literally taking CSU coursework. There's no transfer credit process. You're taking CSU classes, um, which is a really unique opportunity uh, to check out a lot of different places and really keep on track for graduation because you're taking CSU courses. 
Another program I wanted to highlight is through a partner of CSU. So this is what we call an affiliate program called USAC. So USAC is an organization um, well known for providing really affordable programming around the world. So this program, just kind of based on USAC's program model, as well as Costa Rica being a lower cost country, is actually lower the cost of attendance than a semester here at CSU. Students have an opportunity to stay in a homestay, which is a great opportunity to really immerse yourself in Costa Rican culture, um, work on your language if that's of interest, um, and really kind of integrate yourself into the university life. The university is located uh, in the Central Valley of Costa Rica. It's about a 20 minute walk from many different hiking trails that you let you wander through different mountainsides in the area. Um, it's in this town called San Ramon, and it's known as the heart of Costa Rica, where you encounter friendly people in a peaceful, relaxed lifestyle just in the mountains. So it's really kind of popular with CSU students for that reason. Uh, students can take coursework at this local university of around 2,000 students, so it's a smaller university. By attending there, you have access to the campus laboratories and herbarium, so cool opportunity to explore some of the local flora. Um, the university provides easy access to a nature reserve, which is actually administered by the school, the biological field station. So this is a really cool program where you can do independent research, you can do internships, you can volunteer in some field related opportunities. So great way to supplement what you're learning here in the classroom, a little bit more of that field learning. Um, courses are offered in different biosciences, health, um, Latin American culture, Spanish language, so a wide variety of coursework depending on what your area of interest is. Another program is through DIS, um, an organization that we work with in Copenhagen. Uh, Denmark is expensive, um, but DIS does offer an automatic discount of five to $3,000 for CSU students over the course of the semester, which really brings things down, which is pretty awesome. This is a really unique organization that challenges students to examine issues from a variety of perspectives. So yes, you're looking at biosciences, but in a more kind of a tangible and kind of theoretical way and helping students think about how these issues are perceived, they're lived and theorized in Europe, and then kind of reflect on your own nor uh, cultural norms and values that shaped your path to becoming you know, interested in this sort of academic field. Um, DIS offers different field studies where you can hone your skills in research or labs, um, practicums or different internships. It's also a cool opportunity to travel with other students in your class. So the faculty takes students on two integrated courses in other places in Europe. So a great opportunity to check out different locations as well, all included as part of the program. Um, this program also offers different housing opportunities. So if you're interested in a homestay or they have different student uh, apartments, they also have like living and learning communities like we have here on campus, so a wide variety of homes of uh, uh, accommodations, uh, depending on what you're interested in. The last program I want to highlight is through an organization called CIEE, again, another affiliate uh, at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. The Un University of Cape Town is one of the top ranked universities in Africa and nestled right along the side Table Mountains, which is a beautiful campus. Um, this is just a fascinating place to spend a semester or more and a really unique opportunity to experience university life in a really international perspective. Uh, students have access to the full coursework at the university, including what they call the Faculty of Science, uh, which were, where you find a number of different courses that would fit well for your major. CIEE provides students with a lot of support throughout the program. And that includes facilitating internships, they have different service learning opportunities, and they also bring students on excursions around South Africa. Students can live in the residence halls or in homestays or in apartments. Again, depending on what you're interested in or what kind of experience you're looking for, that's something you can identify and talk to your coordinator about because there are different opportunities for housing on this program as well. So that's a quick little introduction to some popular programs. Um, another thing that we often get questions about is how do I earn credit for these experiences, right? Super important. And really this does depend on which program model you are doing, but we are here to help you throughout the process. CSU does offer over hundred programs that give students CSU credits. Um, that includes Semester SC, which I mentioned, as well as some of our faculty, all of our faculty led programs. Again, you're just taking CSU courses abroad, so that transfer credit is not an issue, just as a CSU class. 
for programs that offer transfer credit, there are two steps to ensuring those credits will work for your degree. And that's something we're working through long before you depart. So there's something you do months and months and months before you depart. So first you have your coursework reviewed by the registrar's office and they'll deter determine how many credits each course is worth and as well as if it'll be upper or lower division credits. And then you'll work with your academic department to determine how those courses will fulfill your personal degree requirements. So a little more kind of um, nuance and specificity to your graduation plan. And then with these two approvals, mm -hmm. you should have more understanding about how this experience will help you keep on track for graduation. This is the transfer credit form. Again, if you're doing a program where transfer credit is uh, the way you gain credit, this is something that you work through many, many months in advance. And in fact, you can submit multiple of them. I think it's important to recognize that there are a lot of different uh, professional staff to help support you through this process and advise you as you prepare for your experience abroad. And we're all working heat together to make sure your questions and needs are addressed. So we have your education abroad coordinator, your academic advisors, as well as uh, your program advisor, either through the organization or your CSU professor who's gonna be on site with you. So a number of different people here to support you. So let's start thinking about some next steps that you can take to make this experience a reality. First, you can schedule an appointment to meet with one of our coordinators. So our coordinators specialize in different regions of the world. So your assigned coordinator will be based on where you wanna study. So again, I advise for the Middle East and Africa. So let's say you're interested in that DIS program in Copenhagen, you'd be working with my colleague, Marie. If you haven't decided where you'd like to go abroad yet, I encourage you to think about your goals, your priorities, your interests. Um, for example, if there's a certain language you wanna study, or a part of the world you've always wanted to explore. Are you interested in going abroad for a full semester or do you think a shorter term program may be better to, for your graduation plan? So we're all here to help you navigate those initial questions and help you determine which program is the best fit for you. And again, if you haven't been abroad to that at Abroad 101 presentation yet, I encourage you to do so because this is, that's a great place to learn a little bit more about those first thoughts about what are my goals and priorities for going abroad. We also have peer advisors um, in our office who can speak to their experiences abroad. So these are students who recently returned from studies abroad. We can talk to you about what worked well, what didn't work well, their challenges, their successes, and just speak a little bit more about um, their experience as a CSU student. Financially and scholarships. So a majority of the scholarships, grants, and loans uh, you receive here at CSU can go abroad with you. Each day of the fair, we're having a financial aid and scholarship presentation. So that's at 9.30 a.m. tomorrow. Um, and my colleague, Cindy and Evelyn, can introduce you to how education abroad works, uh, how financial aid for education abroad works, as well as give you an introduction to different scholarships specifically for education abroad that you can take advantage of. It's important to acknowledge that scholarships will rarely fully fund your program, but they can really do a lot to close the gaps between what you currently receive here in, in aid and what sort of funding you may need to go abroad. There's a lot more information about financial aid and scholarships on our website. Uh, so if you don't get the information you need through the fair, please do make an appointment uh, with either Cindy or Evelyn, look at our website, and we can help you figure out how your aid can transfer, what sort of scholarships you can take advantage of specific to your program or specific to the aid that you already receive, and help you kind of figure out what your budget may be and which programs could be best fit based on that budget because again, programs do vary um, by cost. So that's the basics on getting started and here are some additional next steps I'm going to think about. First, plan out what classes you need to graduate because if you know what sort of classes you need, that can help us find a program that works well for you. Visit the Start Here page of the Edu Education Abroad website, it kind of details all these next steps in a really linear fashion. You can start researching some of our programs online and then if you find one, especially like in a specific region, you can make an appointment with an education abroad coordinator. But even if you don't know which program is of interest, maybe just think about what part of the world you wanna study in, and then you can meet with an education abroad coordinator based on that region. Make an appointment with financial aid advisor for an education abroad. Again, thinking about the finances and how your scholarships can transfer. And then finally apply and take advantage of the money that's available specifically for education abroad students. 
Finally, I do want to highlight some other sessions to attend over the course of the fair at Abroad 101, the financial aid scholarships. And there's a couple of different um, specialized presentations that I thought might be of interest to students in your college. One would be undergraduate research. Unfortunately, it already happened today, but the um, recording is, is uh, saved on our YouTube channel. And then tomorrow, or rather on Thursday, there's a Peace Corps uh, coffee chat, which would be a great opportunity to learn more about the Peace Corps. So that is all from me. Vanessa, I see we have one minute. Do we have any questions? Okay. Well, thank you all for your time. Quick little introduction. There's a lot more to see at the fair this week, and I hope to see you in our office sometime soon.